Right guys, welcome back to Psychological Explanations for Schizophrenia. This is the second part of the video and we are going to be focusing on the evaluation points for the theories. If you haven't looked at the theories yet, the link to the video should be appearing on your screen now, so you can go and check those out if you need to before you learn about the evaluation points. I've got five evaluation points for you, and then we're going to finish off with a couple of exam questions just so you can see how this has come up in the past. So we'll start off with a little bit of support for the role of family dysfunction. So we have a strength because we have evidence that links family dysfunction to schizophrenia. And family dysfunction includes things like insecure attachment and exposure to childhood trauma, particularly abuse. Okay, you've got a little bit of research there by Reed from 2005, which showed that adults with schizophrenia are disproportionately likely to have insecure attachments. And Reed also reported that 69% of women and 59% of men with schizophrenia have a history of physical and or sexual abuse. You've also then got a little bit more research by Merkved et al. from 2017 that showed that most adults with schizophrenia reported at least one childhood trauma. Okay, so you've got a lot of evidence there for the role of family dysfunction. Now, you may realize here that none of this actually supports the theories that we looked at, but it does support the idea that some kind of family dysfunction could make people vulnerable to schizophrenia. Okay, so it is a research support overall. However, that being said, the theories that we looked at lack support. Okay, so there's plenty of evidence that supports the idea that family-based stress and family-based trauma is associated with schizophrenia. However, there's almost no evidence for the importance of traditional family-based theories like the schizophrenogenic mother and the double-bind hypothesis. The problem is that both of those theories are based on clinical observations of patients and informal assessments of personalities of mothers of patients, but there's no systematic evidence which means that actually the family explanations haven't been able to account for a link between childhood trauma and schizophrenia. And so there's a lack of support, particularly for the schizophrenogenic mother and the double bind hypothesis. Now, this next one is an interesting one, and this is a nice one to kind of remember. It's a discussion point. Okay, so the point that we're making is parent blaming. The link between family dysfunction and schizophrenia poses a little bit of a moral dilemma because on the one hand, there's no research support for the traditional theories, like we said before. However, there is plenty of support in showing that insecure attachment and childhood trauma can affect individuals' vulnerability to schizophrenia. So we have some really nice, useful information there. However, that being said, this area of research is very socially sensitive and it can lead to things like parent blaming, and it almost adds insult to injury for parents who are having to watch their child experience the symptoms of schizophrenia. And it means that psychologists have to weigh up the pros and cons of actually conducting research like this. This leaves a really nice opportunity for you to weigh in and put your own spin on it. So, for me, as a link, I've put in there... Psychologists shouldn't shy away from investigating sensitive topics because with the correct precautions and the correct considerations taken, for example, how would the research be used, is the research valid, and so on, the benefits of the research will hugely outweigh the costs and it will have countless real-world applications in things like attachment, childcare, parenting skills, social work, and many more. So it will actually go on to help people in the long run. Now that link there is a nice little throwback to the issues and debates topic where we looked at ethical considerations. And so this is a really nice discussion point where you can actually link in another topic and show the examiner that you really know your stuff. Okay then, just to finish off then, I have a couple of evaluation points for the cognitive explanations. So you've got research support for dysfunctional thought processing by John Sterling et al. in 2006, who compared the performance on a range of cognitive tasks in 30 people with schizophrenia and compared them to a control group. The tasks included things like the Stroop task, which 
is where patients have to name font colours of colour words, and so they have to suppress the tendency to read the words out loud. And as predicted by Frith in his central control theory, people with schizophrenia took longer to name the font colours. So that suggests that cognitive processes of people with schizophrenia are impaired. And then as a limitation of cognitive explanations, you've got one that says, unfortunately, they are only proximal explanations. So proximal explanations can explain what is happening right now, but they can't explain what initially caused the condition, such as genetics or family dysfunction explanations. Okay, so they are proximal rather than distal explanations. Now, what's currently unclear and not well addressed is how genetic variation or childhood trauma may lead to problems with things like meta-representation or central control. And that means that cognitive theories on their own only provide partial explanations for schizophrenia, but they can't actually tell us very much about where the condition comes from in the first place. Okay? So you've had quite a lot of evaluation points there. So just to kind of put them all at a glance for you, this is the order that I would learn them in. So I would definitely learn the parent blaming evaluation point, and I would definitely learn the research support by John Reed. If you don't want to learn the lack of support point, that's fine. It's not going to be the end of the world. In terms of cognitive explanations, I would start with your research support and definitely make sure I've got that. But then if you don't want to learn the proximal explanations, then that's okay as well. As a general rule, you need three or four. If you go for three, then obviously you're going to have two for one and one for the other. But ideally, you would have two for each. Okay, so just pick and choose which ones you want to learn based on how useful you think they're going to be. Okay, so just to finish off then, we are going to have a look at a couple of exam questions, and we're going to jump straight in with an eight mark application question. So for this one, you need to describe and explain the family dysfunction explanation for schizophrenia, and you need to link it to Jack's experiences. Now, based on the content alone, you can already see that any of the three theories that I've gone over would do the trick here. You've got a schizophrenogenic mother, you've got a double bind where she's all affectionate on the one hand but then very nasty on the other hand. You've got negative expressed emotion, lots of over-involvement but again nasty comments. Any of them would work. The mark distribution is four and four, so four for an outline and four for an application. So if it were me, I'd be talking about two of the three theories for two marks each, and then I'd be applying both of those theories to Jack, again, for two marks each. Okay, so there's a nice little question there. Moving on, you've got a couple more that have come up recently. So you've got explain how family dysfunction may be involved in schizophrenia with reference to one or more types, and that's four marks, and it's only family dysfunction. One or more isn't a trick question. You can literally do one for four marks if you feel like you can, or you can do more than one for less than four marks. The second one down is, again, a very similar one to the first one, except it's only worth two marks, so it's an exercise in condensing. Make sure you can get it all into a couple of sentences. Don't overdo it, but just try to get the key ideas from the family dysfunction theory without necessarily going into a particular theory. Okay, so I've got a slide on that. It's the introductory slide to family dysfunction in the outline video. And so if you want to have a look at that, the link should be on your screen now. The third one down is outline one psychological explanation of schizophrenia, again for four marks. So for this one, you're really Given the choice, you can do cognitive explanations or you can do family dysfunction. So you've got meta-representation, central control, or schizophrenogenic mother, double binds, and negative expressed emotion. Four marks, you need to know a little bit about it. So you'll be expected to give a little bit of detail. Um, and so I would choose the one that you are most comfortable with. And then finally, you have the good old 16 marker, outline and evaluate one or more psychological explanations for schizophrenia. 
I would talk about one theory of family dysfunction and one cognitive theory in detail, and I would do it in the way that I did my six mark outline in the outline video. Okay, so again, if you want to have a look at that, then the link should be appearing at the end of this video. Obviously, for that 16 marker, three evaluation points as a minimum will get you a decent mark. I would aim for four, though, if you can. So that is the end of the video. I hope it's all made sense. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comment section below, and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.